Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 8th of August with me Patrick Munley. Starting in the US it's all about inflation for the week ahead. Now that some Fed members have pushed back on the idea of a Fed pivot and with the very robust job data coming out on Fridays, investors will want to see if inflation continues to show signs that inflation has potentially peaked. The US economy might be slowing down and that will lead to some demand destruction for goods. The July inflation report is expected to show a much slower pace of price pressures, but it ends up being a hot report. Uh, expectations for the September FOMC meeting are now poised at a 75 basis point after the, uh, the job data. And if, it, if that inflation print comes in hot, then that's just going to add to the conviction there. Month over month reading is expected to show 0.2% increase down from the 1.3% pace in the prior month. The headline year over year reading is expected to ease from 9.1% to 8.8%. The other important data set for the week ahead is the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report, which is expected to stabilize. Traders will also want to pay close attention to a few Fed appearances during the week from Evans, Kashkari and Daly. Leading up to the September policy decisions, traders want to know how many Fed members are positioning themselves for a slower pace of tightening policy. Also, we have election season continuing in the US with primary elections in Connecticut, Minnesota, Vermont and Wisconsin. Moving to the charts from a technical perspective, dollar index held trend channel support that we identified last week, just above that 105 level. And we have uh, Try to grind out here to the upside, uh, closing uh, just below the pivot uh, at the 106.40s on Friday. So uh, from a technical perspective now, there is a chance that we do a double correction and ultimately test the equality objective at 104.20s. But obviously we'd have to take out this trendline support on a closing basis to, uh, to see that move play out. The alternative scenario and the bullish scenario for me would be any close through 107.30. I want to engage on the long side. Look for a retest price cycle highs just above 109 en route to that 110.20 area. From there, I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns. Certainly, we should have sufficient momentum divergence then to play for a counter trend corrective move back into that 106.80s. At this stage, we need to close through this 104.20 to suggest deeper corrective action 103.20s and 102.30s as the next downside objective. Moving to the Eurozone, uh, next week is looking uh, a little quiet on the European data front with final inflation data, the only notable release. Of course, it will attract plenty of attention considering the level of central bank activity at the moment, but revisions do tend to be less impactful. With the winter already in mind, the focus will remain on Russia. Uh, gas flows as Nord Stream 1 continues to run at 20% capacity. So from a technical perspective, in terms of the euro dollar, whilst we hold the pivot here at 10096, we are still looking for an equality objective 10415. Certainly from there, we're watching the bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, looking for this move down into the yearly S3 at 9760s. Um, at this stage, uh, close below that pivot uh, through that 10090 would also trigger short positions for me and I'd be targeting again that move down to the 9760s before I think we can see a much more meaningful corrective advance. Moving to the UK, uh, obviously we still have a debate about who's going to be the leader of the Conservative Party and ultimately Prime Minister and that, uh, that continues this week. But the, from a data perspective, the focus is going to move to Friday and the GDP data. It's the standout event next week, especially in light of the bleak BOE forecast from last Thursday. The country may not be in recession yet, but the central bank thinks it will be very soon and the slump will be long and painful. If the GDP data on Friday is unexpectedly negative, it will compound the misery facing the country over the next couple of years. So from a technical perspective, uh, sterling dollar tested into the equality objective. And we did find some supply. We've now taken out the trend line support, the internal trend line here. So what we watch for next is a test of this uh, 1.1940s, 1.1950 area. We could potentially put it in an inverse head and shoulders scenario from there. So we're watching for bullish reversal patterns from that level 
to potentially engage on alongside. But if we take that out on a closing basis, then we are looking ultimately for a grind down into that 115 uh, target to the downside. At this stage, really take a close back through the uh, 123 level to suggest we uh, the low is already potentially in and we have uh, further corrective upside to trade. Moving to Japan and what do we have there this week? Um, well, I guess the, the main driver for, uh, for, for the dollar yen pair anyway this week is going to be the inflation print on Wednesday. Uh, Japan domestically has a heavy week in terms of data releases, but they're all second tier and are really unlikely to have a, an impact on the markets. So uh, we anticipate that the dollar yen is really going to take its lead from the uh, US yields and certainly want to pay close attention to that CPI print on Wednesday for, uh, for the next phase in terms of the catalyst I see for the dollar yen um, from a fundamental perspective. So what we're looking at from a technical perspective is whilst we hold this 103.50s to, uh, sorry, 136.50, 135.50s to 136.20s, watch for bearish reversal patterns here. And I want to engage on the short side, looking for a three-way corrective move then to target 126.80s before once again, uh, looking to re-engage on the long side in terms of the dollar yen. Moving to Australia, uh, and again, pretty light data calendar. The only data of note really is going to be consumer and business sentiment, which is released on Monday. Uh, they're the only releases of notes, and um, the anticipation is for some improvement in consumer confidence. Last time was a negative 3% print, looking for a market consensus here of 1.4%. And the consumer confidence index looking for that to creep up from 83.8 to the 85 level. Now, the Australian dollar, similar really setup or, or structure to that uh, of, uh, of sterling. We took out the internal trend line resistance. We tested the pivot, closed above it, but closed weak on Friday. So again, we could put in an, in, uh, an inverted head and shoulder scenario if we hold any test of the 6850s down to the 6830s. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side, ultimately looking for a test of the high volume mode at 7180s. The alternative scenario is that we get a break of resistance at 7040s, and again from there, once we engage on the long side, looking for this 7180s. However, if we get further weakness into the start of trade this week and we take out that 6830s on, uh, on a closing basis, then I want to be engaged on the short side because we still have this uh, open downside objective, the big weekly equality objective down to 6640s. And we'll just wrap the session up by taking a quick look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin continues to consolidate in a similar fashion to the, uh, the last phase that we saw between uh, May and June. Uh, it's extending, but the technical structure here uh, is overlapping and suggests that we are in a corrective phase and we still have that downside equality objective at 12,185. So what we're watching for is any breach of the trend channel support uh, back through the 20K level uh, to engage on the short side looking for that 12,185 test to the downside. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 8th of August. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage all this. Until next week, thanks very much.